Hey, it's me, Jason, just checking in really quickly here, um, which is, uh, again, I think useful for us just in terms of our workshop, but also uh, a reminder of something that, the kind of thing that you might want to build into your own hybrid um, or maybe even online classes, just as a way of, again, especially in a situation like ours where we just have that once a week meeting, um, I have had different success, I'll admit, with a Tuesday, Thursday class that goes hybrid. So you just meet that once per week versus let's say a Monday, Wednesday, Friday that goes hybrid where we have a couple of meetings a week and then a shorter turnaround before we see each other again. So these kinds of check-ins I think are really important, again, useful for our workshop purposes, but a nice example of something that you might also build into your courses um, uh, to keep yourself sort of present, to remind students of, you know, their, their uh, role in being accountable in the course and all that kind of stuff. Um, so just as a reminder, we're in unit three in our course right now, which is this idea of the world of is online. So we had spent a little bit of time looking at these possibilities for student readiness, uh, not really to evaluate like which one should we use at COD, but um, uh, what aspects of these might be useful, might not be useful, um, what are students likely to derive benefit from, and then these bigger questions that COD really hasn't answered, uh, they tend to be ongoing about if you have some sort of readiness requirement for students, where does it go in the registration process? Again, is it a requirement? Do you just leave it to a self-assessment? Um, I continue to be torn about how this should work or how it could work most effectively. The end goal for me is obviously to make sure that students are well informed and make realistic choices about what learning modes they opt for, whether it's fully face-to-face, -face, hybrid, online, whatever it happens to be. Um, so really the worst case scenario, so I don't have a perfect solution by any means, but to me the worst case scenario is that you don't really have anything in place, there's nothing that points students to any kind of orientation. Um, you're really just, it's, you know, it borders on unethical to me if you're just enrolling the same group of students or literally the same student in the same learning mode for the same course where that student has failed once, twice, then a third time. Um, it's hard to believe, but it is a, um, a common occurrence, not just at COD, but kind of in the world of online and e-learning generally. Um, and then you have the problem of scalability. So what works at a small school where you can maybe have the person power to manage a registration system and flagging certain students and, and um, <clears throat> you know, dealing with them individually uh, and making sure that they are prepared. If they're not prepared, they have other viable options you know, how do you manage all that stuff? So what works in a small environment, then you've got to scale to the size of COD. So that presents yet another challenge. Um, my sense is that uh, Brett Kaup's Office of Learning and uh, Learning Technology is really working towards solving some of this, or at least if not solving completely, if, if that's even a possibility, then at least um, maybe doing a better job than what we've done so far, which has kind of been a combination of nothing and then we throw some of this, the questionnaires out there for students to maybe not do if they don't want to. Our, you know, registration system that gives very little info about, like, what is a net here? It's internet online, okay. If it's an HYB, it's a hybrid course, but what does that really tell us about that learning mode? And is that going to be suitable for students? And, you know, all of that kind of stuff. <clears throat> okay. So that's what we covered in class or began to look at and think about. The online piece has us thinking about an online experience we've had. Um, maybe uh, signing up for a conference like I just did the other day, booking travel, uh, buying something through Amazon or any number of other uh, um, e-retailers. What is that experience like? Is it positive? Is it negative? Frustrating? Not frustrating? Um, and it's not really to compare like the Amazon experience, let's say, with Blackboard, that's a really apples and oranges kind of thing. Not only are the systems designed to do very different things, but um, uh, the sheer like money, the volume of resources that Amazon can put behind that system is you know, never gonna be equaled by an educational institution. 
Um, but I think it's still really uh, instructive to think about good or bad experiences we have doing something online and then what seems to characterize either the good or the bad pieces of those experiences. And then take that one step further to think about our own course design where we do have to work in Blackboard or in an LMS uh, depending on where you're teaching or what you're doing. And can we duplicate some of maybe what's happening in our positive experiences in other online situations in the online situation that we're going to force you know students to be a part of. Not that we can duplicate the Amazon experience. It seems to know what I want to buy before I do. It's very creepy. Um, so right, there's limits to what we're doing here. Uh, but you know, there's also ways that we can duplicate some of that stuff um, and make it a good experience. Or we learn from bad experiences where you get locked in these loops where one uh, help page sends you to a next help page that loops you back to the place you just started at and it's just around in circles and all of a sudden you've got five different browser windows open, three of which are actually the same that you've opened multiple times, you know. Those are really, really frustrating experiences. And what I guess what the other piece that I'm asking us to recognize here is even for those of us who are educators, who are motivated to be working with technology or in a kind of newer learning mode, um, <clears throat> you know, think about how long it takes you to get frustrated doing something online or electronically. Um, if things don't go well, you know, we, we check out soon, right? Minutes, maybe seconds even. Um, and then in the educational environment, we wonder, do students get frustrated and then opt out or just as terrible really is that they are frustrated but know that they have to do this thing they have to complete the assignment submit the file uh, watch the video whatever it happens to be but it's not working right they know they've got to do it so then they're frustrated but also trying to force this thing to work they're looking for technical help they're got all those pages open their system's not working all of that kind of stuff so can we solve that and make sure that never happens of course not um, can we maybe be conscious or thoughtful about design, about what buttons we provide for to provide technical help, about how we offer ourselves as IT, I don't want to say professionals, but, you know, IT f people maybe who are available to, if not answer questions, at least guide students to the right place. Um, can we mitigate some of that frustration, hopefully before it even happens? So that's what we'll be talking about in Unit 3. Okay, if you're still with me here, you'll notice that in our course menu, we have a new button since um, I think it was Margaret who had asked about the final project. We um, will actually get into that uh, in a very uh, directed way as we get into the later units in our course. So you'll notice that unit four actually has us talking about course design. Um, and then we move through a couple more things and spend our last meetings looking at uh, the final projects that people have done. So I've provided this link here, not necessarily because I think you need to be starting it right now, but truthfully, it's probably something that you've been thinking about or that you can see how our various discussions will play into. And pretty straightforward, again, as with a lot of our course, I've tried to, you know, provide guidelines, but also grading and rubric and the things that you probably would want to provide in a, a, a more official um, uh, educational situation where you're actually teaching students, but I'm, I realize that, uh, you know, we're a group of peers, uh, people have different maybe motivations for doing the hybrid course or have different um, uh, time frames for when they might actually teach a hybrid course. So we want to be flexible and uh, make sure that you do something that's meaningful for you as part of this, what I'm calling a capstone project. So really, you're just building a hybrid unit for a course that, you know, in your discipline. Maybe you modify something you've already got. Um, you don't have to build an entire course. We're just looking for certain pieces where you've thought about integration of the face-to-face -face and the online time. What are some of the things that you might do online? Um, maybe some of the other things about design, like maybe you could uh, do a button that has a technical help stuff. Like maybe you don't have all this other stuff built in, but give us an example of how you might address that IT challenge that we were just talking about. So you can look through this and uh, something that we will then talk about in class uh, when we see each other on Tuesday again.
right? Again, trying to be flexible here and do something that uh, that makes sense for you and your situation, your time frame, your comfort level, all that kind of stuff. Okay, 10 minutes. There you go. If uh, anybody has any questions or concerns, be in touch with me. And otherwise, I'll see everybody again on Tuesday. I'm looking forward to it.